Min- I've been holding off on this like a delicious, tasty treat. Okay? Because it is a tasty treat. This guy, I've seen this guy. We watched this guy. He got owned by the, the trad wife uh, woman on this whatever podcast, which is probably the worst of the worst. I mean, it's, this is a treat. This is a treat for all of us. Are men superior to women? Alphas versus betas. Okay? I, it's so good. It's so fucking good. I, this guy is, is awesome. Just the way he looks, the way he carries himself. It, it's great. Let's get started. Men should be the stable ones. Men don't need to be crying in front of women. And ideally, they're not splitting chores. And I don't mean that disrespectfully, but I don't. I, I think, first of all, I just want to say. In a lot of circumstances, I've seen a bunch of this guy's videos. In a lot of circumstances, okay, you don't actually uh, immediately, uh, you know, figure out that someone may or may not have some uh, neuroatypicality. But I'm sorry, I've never seen this dude look another person in the eye ever. Okay? Like... That's all I'm going to say. But, and in a way that is like, in a way that, you know, you know what I mean. You motherfuckers don't look people in the eye in the chat either, okay? Myself included. Shut the fuck up. I, I'm just saying, let's watch. I think that if a woman cannot look up to you in some way, then she cannot respect you. And if she cannot respect you, she cannot love you. Totally just- Bro, he always talks like this. He's always like, yeah, <laughs> I think sometimes you might need to beat your wife. It's fucking fine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's fine. It, it, it's all good. Totally I, I, I totally agree. agree. Totally disagree. <laughs> Step forward if you agree with the prompt. Men are designed to want to sleep with multiple women. Yeah! What does that mean? What are you, a fucking animal? Like, what the fuck? There's nothing more alpha than being a fucking dog. <laughs> yeah, you're fucking beta, brother, if you think that. <laughs> yeah, I would say um, I definitely agree that uh, men, you know, want to sleep with multiple women. I think it's natural because... Uh, one of the things are uh, is because we, you know, we have so much sperm <laughs> and that we, you know, we produce so much sperm and that makes us want to repopulate the earth, basically. And so a lot of times what happens is, is I think that society is telling men not to do that for whatever reason. You know what I mean? And some some guys fall into that. But I definitely believe this guy's shirt says submissive women are sexy. I think the funniest part about being one of these alpha dogs is that, like, you are perpetually in a state of never getting pussy, okay? Or at least the type of women you attract are going to be fucking gross, okay? Like, I'm sorry. It, you Like, it's just... The, don't get mad at me. Don't say that it's misogyny. You know, women can be gross too, okay? They can't. You're not going to... You're not going to find, like... A, like a like a sick person who has like everything together uh who's gonna be like that's what i want to fuck like that fucking demon right there and then i feel like that also reinforces their cycle which i mean obviously they they, they their starting position is fucking insane okay but then they're like yeah all women care about are private jets it's like bro you literally are putting that's the only output you have like, of course, you're only going to be around women that only care about your material possessions and, like, want your money, you fucking idiot, because that's all you're offering. You have nothing else going on. You know what I mean? You got nothing going on. If all you got is, like, oh, look at my cars. They're so sick. Then, yeah, all of the fucking, all the women that are attracted to that are going to be like, yeah, I love cars. I love cars and, and you know, super tight suits that you're wearing, you know? I love the cool cars and shoes and all this shit. And yeah, sometimes those ladies are trying to get the bag. 
These guys get girlfriends who can't drive from DUIs. They get on the way home from work. You got to go for the cool girl that can drive and also has a ton of garbage on the passenger seat of their car. They need a boyfriend's feet on that garbage. <laughs> That's so specific. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Believe that, you know, men actually want to be with multiple women because it's just a natural thing in us. This is why you hear all the time. You know, men always cheating and guys feel like they, you know, trying to hide the cheating and everything like that. And if it was natural for them to just want to be with that one woman, then cheating wouldn't even be an issue. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I look at it. Yeah, I think uh, for the way we were cultured, I agree with that. But also to just through human history, right, for survival, you I mean, maybe this is old school thinking, but it's just like for survival, you need to have lots of kids. So someone's pregnant. I just want to point something out once again, always like obviously appeal to nature is a fallacy because like the entire existence of humanity is about overcoming like our natural instincts or whatever. That's like at the basis of building society. Uh, there's nothing natural about skyscrapers. You know what I mean? I talk about that all the time. There's nothing natural about f flight, you know, nothing natural about, uh, dominating nature that's at the heart of being a human so the idea that like oh this is natural is really stupid especially when you consider that like a lot of things in nature are super fucking gay and super i guess unnatural uh in the eyes of these alpha dogs like just look at the fucking bonobo population you know what i mean like so there's that that's number one number two anyone that says they're alpha are not alpha okay I don't know what alpha even fucking means. I have long considered that like alpha or masculine uh, traits are always just a substitute for confidence. Like they're just talking about confidence and leadership, just ascribing positive values to these concepts. But let me tell you something, okay? No motherfucker who is like truly a confident person is going to go out of their way and be like, I'm so alpha dog. You're not. You're not going to say that. If you have to say it, you don't have it. Okay. How do you keep multiplying? You just more women, right? right? Not saying it's right or wrong, but it's just kind of the way. I think women even cheat too. It's like 50 50. Yeah. I think women also, some, you know, want to do their thing, you know what I'm saying, in some situations. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think it's just, I mean, I think it's a natural, like, I feel like because that desire is there, it's, it's a natural thing for, you know, if we're talking specifically men, that desire to want to do it is natural in us so then therefore you're going to want to do it so i don't think it's a you know a natural thing to just be with this one woman but at the same time when i'm with this one woman i only want to stay with her it's almost like i'm lying to myself if i just want to be with her you know what i mean yeah i mean that makes perfect sense but the question is 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 that the end point is being with multiple women the end point i'm of the firm belief that it is important to position yourself as a man to have the capacity to be with as many women as you possibly can and position yourself in a way where you what? understand female nature and you maximize your potential as a man. And that's where I don't necessarily agree that just because there's a deeper desire. Bro, literally, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but like dudes who are like, yeah, I'm over pussy or whatever are infinitely more sane than dudes who are like being able to fuck as many women as possible is like what my primary goal is. It's like, dude, what are you saying? First of all, here, I'll use terminology that you use. You're putting pussy on a pedestal, okay? You have made it your life's mission at that, in that, at that point. Just, like, be a normal person and treat women like they're human beings, okay? Because they are human beings. What the fuck? Desire to continue to do it means it's going to be the most optimal thing for you and your own ability to thrive at the highest level and connect with God here on earth. I was taught not to be with multiple women, right. right? But it's like, especially, I mean, here's the thing, especially when you're in a relationship, right? right? It's like, it's better to grow together with somebody than multiple people, which I totally agree. But I think in the dating terms, it's like, there's nothing wrong with being multiple women uh, because I think that's just dating. It's experimenting, it's finding other people, but are we naturally made to just always be with one person? It's like, if that were true, then these first thoughts of being with another woman, even though I'm in a committed relationship, would never occur. But it comes up once right. in a while. But it doesn't mean I'm acting upon it. So and you might be being generous about saying this. The two sides of the alpha dog coin. One is like everyone agrees. They're like, you know, man, we got to fuck as many as we can, right? You know what I'm saying, fellas? But then one one side is saying like, and that's why we got to lean into that urge. And the other side is like, no, you got to overcome that urge, brother. 
that's what that's what being alpha is about. I like that there's like internal division among the alphas. Saying once in a while probably comes up quite a bit. What the God, I'm gonna hate the fucking betas, aren't I? Hi, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna fucking despise the betas. I feel like I don't even want to know what they're about to say. I I could just listen to the alpha dogs all day, in in like how insecure they are. And what kind of relationship you're in, I guess, or how how good of a day it is, right? Like. But I would say for me, if it was totally natural, even though I was natured, nurtured, into only being with one woman, that these thoughts wouldn't occur then. Right, and th the thing with me, I'm, you know, I'm not monogamous, so I have, I have a wife, I have a girlfriend, and I still, you know, from time to time, hook up with other girls, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, and the thing is, it's, it, it feels regular to me. It doesn't feel like I'm trying to do it or, or, or doing it because I'm forcing myself. It just feels just natural, like, it's something I want to do, you know what I mean? And so to not do it feels unnatural. You might just want this one moment for a relationship. I, I can understand that. But sexually though, I, I think it's all BS. Yeah, I agree. I, I think a man can absolutely be head over heels in love with a woman and still sleep with other women and it not mean anything to him. Right. And I think all men have the proclivity to want to sleep with other women. Now, whether they're able to speak to that and actually act on that or not. That one little string of hair, it's like on his, uh, Neanderthal brow is killing me. Or if they've been able to, like, like you said, like religiously find a way to work around it. And I think religion has been great for that because if it weren't for religion, we probably would not have society. But I think what's most important to identify. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, no, absolutely. Societal formations did not exist with, before organized religion famously. Yeah. No, no, definitely, dude. I just, this is why we need to defund the arts and defund social sciences further so that we can have these guys say more of this stuff. You know what I mean? It's great. Yeah. Society exists before. <laughs> Society exists for, for uh, due to religion. Uh, okay, thanks, man. Is that yeah. a man should create choice in his life. And if you have choice, you should be able to do as you wish, particularly like in your case, like in my case, if there's no deceit. Exactly. It's the lying. That, in my opinion, is... Okay, that's kind of woke. He's right. It's like, don't lie. If you want to fuck other uh, people when you're in a relationship, just, like, be open about it. And if your partner consents to that, then great. Fair. These guys are poly, okay? They are in a polycule, okay, everybody? That's what they're doing right now. It's called being poly, okay? It's actually the overall problem when, get, when guys, you know, tend to go outside of a relationship. They lie to the woman. That's the problem. So when I but of course, they're so they're such alpha dogs that they can't admit that because that that's gay. <laughs> Being poly, what is that like? Pan? What the fuck? What, what does that mean? I don't know. That's gay. I I'm fucking I'm fucking bitches on the side. That's what it is. That's what I like to call it. I was growing up, I was under the belief of just being with one woman, right? Like I was a virgin for a very long time. Then one girl broke my heart. So that caused like a lot of insecurity, resentment towards the other side, right? And then I just became like a man whore for a little bit. The problem is you have guys who are monogamous, but they're monogamous because they're forced to be monogamous in a way meaning that they have no choice because they don't have the skill to attract multiple women. And a lot of times- Yeah, unlike Mr. Lucario, who definitely has the choice and the skill to attract multiple women, which you can too if you buy my DVD. Uh, <laughs> what does the guy in the blue say when he wants to be in a polycule? A poly want a cracker? Okay, dude, that's... Okay, M. Hud. That's... Sometimes it's a miss, okay? Uh, someone early in the chat said that dude went to the suit store and said, give me the bluest suit you got. And I've still, I've been thinking about it nonstop. Like he pointed to, he said, give me the bluest suit you have. Okay. Some will use that as virtue signaling. I would never do such a thing. Well, actually, bro, you can't. All right. Can the disagree a step forward? By the way, I cannot get over this dude's pants. I think we did something really fucked up when we became more accept. Like we started saying that like, Oh, calling things gay is fucked up and bad. So now you got like these alpha dogs who wear the worst pants of all time. Okay. 
Alpha dogs love wearing literal Lululemon leggings, okay? Like, with those shoes, too, it's, it's Andrew Tate all over again, okay? <laughs> what is happening? I'm sorry. These alpha dogs would be called the F slur in, like, any Midwestern town, okay? You walk into a Midwestern town... Motherfuckers think you're gay for wearing a cardigan, okay? They see how tight this shit is. They're going to be like, <laughs> they're going to hate crime you, okay? You're going to get hate crimed. I'm just saying. You can be, by the way, alpha dog and, and uh, a gay as well, of course. <laughs> you can be a lame-ass alpha dog who also happens to be gay. But, you know, I'm pretty sure these guys would consider that to be bad. I remember when I would, like, go on tour and things like that. My friends would always try to encourage me to, like, hook up with girls that were on to me but I wasn't really like into it. And it made me feel like weird, like off, like there was something wrong with me. Oh God. And now I'm at a point in my life where I feel like I'm only having sex with multiple women. So I'm not weird. So I'm quote unquote normal. I feel like even when I do have sex with these random women, it doesn't give me any gratification. And I know that comes with like- Where are they finding these fucking people, dude? Where? Where do they find, oh my God, dude, what the fuck called it? I didn't even see what the betas look like. And it's like, oh my Lord. Yeah. Let's put a bunch of fucking like roid donkeys. Okay. Who at least have like normal attire, even though it's like kind of funny against like a bunch of people that we found that look absolutely crazy. This is the chief of police of the Portland DMZ. <laughs> like random sex at, in, the, in the end. But I know in the back of my mind that like, I just like simply don't enjoy this. Like I've been with multiple women and I've been with one woman and being with one woman is just so peaceful. As far as like telling young men that they are born this way and that they should feel this way, it can really not do damage, but just sort of making you second guess things about yourself. Am I normal? Am I weird? Is there something off about me? Everyone else around me is saying that I have to feel this way or I have to do these things, but yet I don't feel the courage to do those things. I would say that's not true, though. I don't think that we should promote men sleep with multiple women. I think that we should promote choice and what feels right to you. So in your particular case, I would never tell you to sleep with multiple women. I think you might be doing the right thing to do exactly what you're doing and not do it or stop doing it. It's not about pushing it on the young men, but I'll tell you, there's a lot of young men that have a demon inside and maybe are really upset and frustrated with themselves because they feel a certain way. And it's like, oh, I'm coming out the closet. I'm straight, you know, or, or super straight or too straight or whatever it is. I think that it's what? really going to be about choice, man. So if me to you, I tell you, if that you don't feel good doing that, man, I wouldn't do it at all. Yeah, I, I agree. In your situation, well, what, what was happening, and, and this is what I think a lot of times what happens is you have guys who will have sex with multiple women because they're trying to fill a void. Right. So it shouldn't be about filling a void. It should be about you actually desiring. So you don't desire to do it, so which is why you shouldn't do it. But there are guys who desire to do it but then they're suppressing their desire and then it's doing the same thing as you not wanting to do it. Like they feel, they feel weird about not doing it, but they want to. Whereas you felt weird doing it, but you didn't want to. I think it's a society thing. Like what you just said, who's making them feel guilty about not doing it? Other men. The reason, I think women and men, the question was, do you feel that men are meant to sleep with multiple women? Or they just, you know, that's what they do. And I don't think that's true. I think it's a part of your character and which who you are. I do believe that if you say, if you're going to be honest with your partner, your partner is into it. But do I believe that we are biologically meant and it's in our head because we have to procreate and this and that? I don't believe that. I believe the reason we do it a lot is because it's, it's looked upon as a great thing for men to have multiple women. Women are shamed for that. Shamed totally. I have one son and two daughters and I know the difference of how I felt when they were 15 or in their 20s, now they were 15 versus him having multiple partners or my daughter. So if I, if I could mm -hmm. stroke a check for a million bucks mm -hmm. and never feel that feeling again, I absolutely would. I really, what? really would. It's something. Dude, he's, he's got, he's, he's hungry, brother. He, he's got it in his heart. He's got that dog in him. If I can write off a million bucks, I'd fucking do it. He's saying like, he's got that dog in him and he doesn't like it. He needs to fucking fight it. You know, he needs to fight the urge to fuck as many women as possible. Uh-huh. <laughs>
something that I really hated myself for. And I felt very apart. I grew up in the South, South Louisiana, I was a Bible belt. And I felt very distant from people around me because I had this urge in me and could not understand why I was so different. Like the biggest self-hate I've ever felt in my life is over this particular subject. I thought I was broken. And, and I understand you. And me, again, I'm going to come back with, you know, just being around a bit. And me, I'm bisexual. I've always have been. But like you heard me say, I've been married to a woman for 30 years. And I've been committed for 30 years. It doesn't that I don't have that desire. It's my character to say, this is my person. And that's who I want to be with. Now so that's you're, what you're I... making a character well, versus is the drive. I was going right, to say... Then it, that goes back. He's got great drift, dude. I've just been looking at what he's wearing. I don't want to say anything about the tan, okay? I know everybody recognized it. Everybody saw it. Just, you know, whatever, okay? But the fucking drip is surreal. I would rock the shit out of that. Back to, are we just built that way? Because if we're just built that way as men, then there's multiple people that I'm going to want to sleep with. But I think what I was under the impression with that the question pansy, was, yeah. are we biologically DNA right. created yes, for that? Right. I say yes, but... I love and I agree with what we're saying here. It's like, but as men, right, mm -hmm. in the culture and awareness and being a human being, having a consciousness, choice, language, we can choose not to. We can go <laughs> against those desires or urges Wait, what's and stuff. That, no, if you he's feel like, that desire and you're honest with your partner, I, think he's, I believe that is true. I think he is, he's uh, mixed, but also uh, I think he does have a, a bit of a tan going on top of that. But it doesn't matter because his drip is surreal, Okay. Do I believe that we are biologically meant to, we just biologically want to sleep with more people because we have a penis between our legs and not a vagina? I don't. Well, let me ask you this, though, because you said you're bisexual. So does, that means you're attracted to men and women, right? So if you're with a woman, aren't you also attracted to men? So wouldn't you want a man and a woman? No. So you're just like, I just want one and that's um, I made a commitment. And it's not even like I'm... But there's no a, urge to want... There's always more. an urge. That's, 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 what, that's, 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 that's what we're that's talking about. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I'm biologically, I think men and women both have urges. Where do you think the urge is coming from, though, if it's not biologically inside of you? I think the urge comes from, I don't think it's a biological thing. I, I think it's temptation, we, not urge. I think but the urge creates tem temptation, no? But is temptation bad? Like you say it in a way that's kind of like temptation. No, I don't think temptation's it's bad. Natural. I don't think it's a thing of, all. then that goes back to all of us then. All of us are meant to sleep with multiple people. So right. then that's just a whole different society thing. But it's not just, the question was, is it as men, are we? And I don't think so. But regardless, I think it's important to understand, because I, I think we are. And if we can come to terms with that, we can begin to move past it if that's what we desire. But, but if we reject that idea that it's not natural, then we can't move past it if that's something that someone wants to do. But do you agree it's just men? Do you agree with that statement? This is the dude, by the way. When your 55-year-old bisexual dad has been suing your tracks since you were 13, wait until... I think he seems like a really cool dude. Uh, like, at first I was like a little bit weirded out, but he seems like a cool-ass dude, actually. Right, he seems dope as fuck. Yeah, uh, yeah, one hundred percent. He runs a cooking channel. Oh, he's vegan. Of course, he's vegan, dude. Of course, he's vegan. That's the least surprising thing I've ever heard in my entire life. All right, let's continue. Just no, I think it's women too. Okay, I, that's I, where I, I disagree. Oh no, because we just we just told the men. Right, I, I agree that it's men and women. What? It sounded like was and correct me if i'm wrong um people started talking about like yeah but you gotta recognize he's trying to be black i wouldn't go that far because he might just be i think he is mixed yeah i i don't i i don't think so for the record like infidelity and you know telling the truth and i think like the urges and things are okay until you act upon it um, and that's when both adults just have to have a conversation about, you know, this isn't working out for me. I still want to, you know, are we doing tribunals on mixed people again? Chat. What are you doing? Yeah, exactly. Uh, he definitely, I mean, yeah. Woke my woke 
mind virus chatter. <sighs> yeah, he's definitely Italian. Sleep around or whatever you want to call it. It sounds like some people want to have their cake and eat it too, which I don't necessarily agree with. But I think just as long as all parties and wait, is this a beta dog of what they're getting? Into. Bro, he's burly as fuck. Where'd he come from? I didn't even notice him. What the fuck? Bro, wait. I was so busy uh, dealing with the chatters who were like race investigating uh, uh, the other uh, vegan dude that like, where'd he come from? Bro, he is so yoked and so beta at the same time. Bro, I had no fucking idea he was there. What a behemoth he is too. A burly one, dude. Motherfucker popped in like John Cena. What the fuck? People started talking about it. That's where I yeah. disagree. Oh, no, because we were just talking men. Right. I, mean, I, I agree that it's men and women. What it sounded like was, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, people started talking about, like, infidelity and, you know, telling the truth. And I think, like, the urges and things are okay until you act upon it. Um, and that's when both adults just have to have a conversation about you know this isn't working out for me i still want to you know s sleep around or whatever you want to call it it sounds like some people want to have their cake and eat it too which i don't necessarily agree with but i think just as long as all parties involved have an understanding of what they're getting into i i don't see the issue i mean honestly i, I don't think i could say it any better than he did um that which i feel like most of us or all of us kind of agree upon that it, in the end it, it is a choice that like if you want to be in a, a poly like relationship, that's fine as long as everyone's in agreement. Obviously, don't you know be in a mon monogamous mon monogamous relationship and then you know like single handedly choose to you know sleep with another woman without telling your partner. Like that's when like issues arise. Hi, this is Ragni, the director of this episode. You can now stream your favorite episodes of Middle Ground on Spotify whenever you submissive women Shut are out, more attractive than dominating women. Oh, hell yeah. You know, <laughs> Bro, ran. Bro, really ran, dude. Oh, hell yeah, brother. I mean, I, I, that is a personal preference, okay? That is a personal preference uh, after, you know, many, many experiences that I've had uh, of mine. But it seems like such a weird thing to just, like, state. You know what I mean? To be like... Oh, yeah, that's fucking, yeah. All I'm saying is I've tried it. I've tried both, okay? And I don't like it. I don't like being dominated. He's a well-established misogynist and S-shamer. Be careful with who. You mean to tell me that the dude who is like, who looks like the personification of a used car dealership owner Wearing the tightest, bluest suit of all time is a well-established misogynist? Stop. That's crazy. Hell yeah. Listen, my, my shirt says submissive women are sexy. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, it's true, man. It's true. It, look, I So alpha, they need a woman to be submissive because dominant women scary? No, like, first of all, for the record, I don't like this dynamic either because women can be dominant elsewhere, but not in the bedroom. You know what I mean? Like, I have no, like, I'm not one of these dudes who's like, oh my God, I'm fucking secretly deep down terrified of a woman who is like independent, a woman who's successful, any of those things. Okay. I was just simply talking about bedroom antics in general, but if they're talking about like submissive women as a, as just like a like a thing it just feels so weird it feels so weird to to specify that like as though women aren't human beings that are multifaceted and unique and uh you know it, it's it's just odd you know what i mean like it, it's so it's so incredibly one dimensional that it, it, I didn't even fully understand what the fucking question prompt was because like I, the, the only time where that would be important is if we're talking about, you know, your sexual preferences.
You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck does submissive women? What does that mean? The fuck does that mean? I, I, I think one of the most beautiful things about love is being able to fully take care of a woman in every way, whether that's emotionally protecting, providing, everything about that. Like, every fairy tale that was ever written for all of time was about a man saving a woman from a castle and a dragon, right? Or some sort of scenario like that. And I think that's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And I have nothing against Yeah, I love that shit. That's my favorite. I love watching children's TV shows and making inferences about society off of them. You know what I'm saying? And also, if I see children's TV shows that don't show that back to me, I get mad, which is very alpha dog to do. Alpha dog. Yes, women being empowered. But I do feel like the happiest women in the world are the ones that look up to a man and that he can fight every day to love her and love his kids and his family and provide and, and be that source of something to actually look up to. Like, I believe a woman can admire a man and it's very, very, very healthy. Am I saying that somebody that doesn't do that is not a man? No, I would never. But ideally, the relationships that are going to work, the relationships in, let's say, the 30s, 40s, 50s or, or whenever, you know, we're. Dude, I want to talk to this guy so bad. He's so insane. Okay. He is like. Ever since I saw that one clip where he's like, yeah, I can't be, I can't be tempered. <laughs> I'm horny. Like, bro, how is that like, how is that like a trait that you're openly stating? You know what I mean? I'm like one step removed from <laughs> a violent animal, <laughs> like a feral being. I'm horny. Like, that's all you're saying. You're saying that you're like too horny for society. That's not a positive trait. Why are you saying that as though it is a positive trait? That's not cool, okay? You keep saying that you're feral. You keep saying that you're horny. That's all I'm hearing. When you say, like, I can't be tempered. I got, I got the dog in me. Like, I'm not thinking, oh, man, how cool. I'm thinking you're in heat, and you need to be put down <laughs> somehow. Like, <laughs> what is going on? Should we put you in a medically, should we put you in a medically induced coma? Like, what is happening? I'm rabid, brother. I'm horny. We have a nuclear family stay together before we went off the gold standard and inflation pushed everybody to have two people have to have a job. Oh, gold standard mentioned. Whoa, 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 whoa. Libertarian right there, brother. Hell yeah. I'm one of them Ron Paul libertarians. Nuclear family stay together before we went off the gold standard and inflation pushed everybody to have two people have to have a job. Yeah, dude, I do. I think those relationships are much happier when the man can lead a house and be. Yeah, famously, relationships were much better in the 60s, said the guy who watched episodes of Mad Men, uh, never for once even considering what women felt in that situation. Uh, one of the funniest commentary, one of the funniest things I've seen about this, okay, is that one take that I go back to all the time, which is that, like, you know, since divorce became more normalized, you hear about men getting poisoned and dying to poisoning a lot less frequently. And I think about that a lot. Because I think that that was probably what was happening all the fucking time. It probably hurt sales of Visine in some respects. And, and that's fine, you know. But it's, it's probably better to, like, not be in an abusive relationship and not be perma-stuck and seeing the only way out as... Uh, as though it's out of a fucking Brothers Grimm novel where you have to literally murder your husband. Be proud of going out and going to work every day and fighting for his family. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I think what we have to do is we have to look at general female happiness because that's really what I'm into. Like, I don't really care what guys think or what girls think. I think I have a unique perspective in that I've worked with a lot of high-performing women that operate in this dominant role. And I work with them for the purpose of helping them be able to reintegrate with that more submissive, a connected, intuitive part of themselves that really is connected to their bodies that if they were connected to their bodies wouldn't be as dominant, at least in the presence of men. And with every woman that I've worked with, there is this deep, deep, deep desire, regardless of what she says externally, to submit to the leadership. Yes, dude. When I want to learn about a subject, let's say I want to learn about mathematics. Who do I go to? I go to a toddler, Okay. When I want to learn about astrophysics, who do I go to? I go to a caveman. And when I want to learn about women, who do I go to? A guy who's clearly not a woman and literally doesn't think women have any kind of autonomy 
or their own perspectives. A guy who says things like, even when women tell me that they want to be independent, in my experience, not listening to their demands, I have come to the conclusion that when they say, no, I want to be independent, they still want to submit to a strong leader. Okay? Why is it that people that are constantly seeking out information about, uh, you know, women go to men who know nothing about women who don't even think women are actual people. This is one of the fundamental problems that I have with the manosphere because like so many of these dudes look like unfuckable losers. Like they sound so insane. Like this guy's attractive. Even the guy in the blue suit is like relatively an attractive dude. Okay. But they're so insanely corny that they work against their their uh, best interests. They're so insanely corny that they are never going to actually turn around and attract a woman who is, you know, worthwhile, okay? Like I said, there are definitely women out there who are kind of shitty, and I'm sure that they're going for these dudes, okay? And then they're permanently stuck in that cycle. And also, ladies, get your back. You know what I mean? Get your fucking back. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're if you're milking for if you're milking these dudes for all they got, then good on you. You know what I mean? Probably gonna have to put up with the uh, you know uh, not insignificant amount of abuse, but it is what it is. Of a man that she knows can properly hold down the emotional space and really put her interest. Right. At the forefront. Right. Because as soon as when a woman is dominant over that man, she can't respect him. It's just impossible. And, it's still safe. Right. Exactly. And, and, and the thing is, wow. the thing is with submission is like if you, if you even look at the word submission, sub under a mission. If I have a mission and this woman is under my mission, meaning she. This is my favorite type of person. The type of guy that says things like uh, politics is poly which is multiple and ticks which are blood-sucking parasites there you go a guy that fucking will take a word and just completely butcher its etymology i love that okay he's i'm leading her right then that is a, a actual good relationship that's going to flourish truly deep down every woman would love nothing more than to be more feminine in a role in a family and, and take on that either that motherly role or that nurturing role or the role that feels supportive to the overall mission of a man. It's just got to be a man worth getting behind and weak men are the reason why this is a problem. Case in point, look at the workplace and you don't see women applying for jobs to be power line guys or hang steel at steel. Okay, but you're not either. You're a TikTok alpha dog influencer guy. You wear the lamest fucking suits and talk about how bitches are a certain way. You're not working on a power line. What the fuck are you saying? Why is it that all these dudes always talk about the power line? Okay. What are you doing? You're not working on a fucking blue collar job. Shut the fuck up. Why? Why do you immediately go back to that? You probably have an Andrew Tate style multi-level marketing scheme that you're sucking a bunch of fucking uh, losers into with your digestible anti-women conversations, okay, when you appear on these fucking podcasts, and then you turn around and 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 talk about, like, you know, women don't want to work in the fucking power lines. It's like, sure, you know, there are plenty of people who don't uh, do that and can't do that. We should pay the people that work on the fucking lines. Linemen are actually paid uh, fairly decently for the most part. We got some linemen in here. There are a lot of instances unionized as well, so shouts out to those guys. But, like, you know, that's the whole purpose behind living in a society, okay? Like, that's that's where this comes from, you know? The, we, we, we have a, a division of labor. We have people that are more capable of doing certain jobs, and we have people that are less capable of doing certain jobs. So I don't know why the fuck people are always, like, you know constantly talking shit and mythologizing one aspect of of uh the workplace okay as a way to like dunk on women or some shit like bitch you don't fucking take unionized linemen and put them as the ceo anyway it's not like that's not what's happening the ceo is never the rugged guy who's worked uh, a a hardcore job okay the ceo is the guy who never even sees the fucking factory floor so what the fuck are you saying company so you don't see women applying for jobs to be power line guys or 
hang steel at steel companies. They're not picketing outside of the United States Army being like, why won't you draft me? Right. They don't want that smoke, bro. <laughs> like, let's let, and that's okay. But neither do you. Neither do you. You don't want the smoke either. You live a comfortable life, okay? Are you saying that your lifestyle is gay? Are you saying that your lifestyle is soy? Dare I say beta? You're not doing that. Shut the fuck up. Also, no one should protest to join the army. No one should join the army in general. What the fuck is he talking about? God, I hate this shit so much. Also, women do join the army. What the fuck are you saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. Why do none of these alpha men know how to wear suits? They look so metrosexual. Yeah. It's a part of being an alpha dog in 2023. He meant the draft. What draft? What, what are we? Is this Vietnam? Where's the draft? There's a poverty draft. Hey, so right. and I can't, I can't say enough. It's like, as a man, like you get to take pride in taking care of a woman. Mm protecting women what about your daughters man you want to protect and provide care for what about your sons do you not want to protect your sons is that just a women only thing you want to only selectively protect your daughters you want to protect your children because you know they can't really protect themselves i would probably protect if i had children i would protect my children from a dude like this and this kind of fucking behavior for the record it's not just about women in that regard you know what i mean for them that's okay let them be feminine a strong man doesn't need you to be a man he say fine you can be a woman you're safe sweetheart you right. come with me right that's it um <clears throat> there were just a few things that i disagree on um i think that in 2023 especially i think women just want to be able to look to the side and see their partner as an equal and i think a lot of women now are I don't think they're trying to be men. I think what they're realizing is that the qualities that they were looking for in men, they've always had it within themselves. If women are submissive, it's mostly for, I, I want to say like the validation for the man. I think they know in the back of their heads, like they know now that they can do things on their own, but I don't think they necessarily need a man. But I think what they're looking for is that intimacy to have a partner, but I don't think that they require one. Oh, no, they do, because, uh, you know, a, a lot of these girls, they usually go home and cry at night from being lonely, from not having a man. They have all these things, and then they don't, they're, they're upset they don't have a man. You know what I mean? And I heard you say that, you know, women want to be the men's equal, but you, you don't see, and maybe this could just be a societal thing, that a societal pressure, but you don't see women doing things that could make them equal to the men. You don't see the women approaching the men. You don't see the women paying for the dates. You don't see the women uh, being more assertive to the man. You see what I'm saying? So where is that at? Cause they got options. They got so much more options than well, men. I'll tell you what you do see. You see a high level of women on antidepressants more than ever, right? And I think that's a bunch of women trying to cope with trying to be like a man when really, let me ask you a question. Are you more attracted to a woman that has a high- Wait, what the fuck? Wait, do men famously not consume antidepressants? Like, dude, these guys are awesome. I love the, the fact-free commentary on this shit. You know what I mean? It's always like that. It's like, yeah, you see these like women. <laughs> Many women are reporting that they're unsatisfied uh, by working and saying uh, that they want to actually work not a real job, but be submissive to me. Okay, that they reported it to me personally. And it's like, where did they say that? Where did you find this information? Why? Why is it never like why? <laughs> Oh, they commit suicide instead, Lamau. Yeah, that's the other thing. Like, and then they talk about fucking male suicide and, and talk about how like men are actually the real victims of society. In many respects, they are. Like, men are victimized in society, just as women are as well. Everyone is. They're victimized under uh, you know, oppressive constructs. Even uh the white heteronormative patriarchal constructs are actually is still harming men, white men, white heterosexual men. But like, oh, that's pussy shit. You just got to fucking push it deep down, brother. You got to push it deep down, brother. It's like, it's so stupid. Kaya is giving me this motherfucking side eye right now on this. She knows what's about to happen to her. No, she's about to go on Delicious Town, okay? About to eat some cheese whiz.
Make sure it's tasty. Try it first. I did yesterday. It's actually very tasty. Like, it's not even a joke. I, I, I tasted it. It's better if you freeze them. You should be looking for hours and we'll sleep at night. Yeah, I know, but it's fun. Yeah, I had it yesterday. You should be in a Jubilee video. I'd do it for... Pan job. Uh, I'd do it for Ben, ben Shapiro. That doesn't matter. It's, it does matter. It does matter. It's, you, you asked me. <laughs> to, to, you, you, you could, but I would like to say a mother figure rather than a woman. Absolutely. I think it's a bad argument. I think you should admit that, like, yes, of course. Of course beauty matters. Okay? But the difference is beauty is arbitrary. Beauty is personal. What's beautiful to you might not be beautiful to someone else. But because it's so subjective, okay, because attraction is so fucking subjective, the idea that, like, uh, uh, the idea that you're, like, looking for someone that's not beautiful is a stupid one, to be fair. I, I just don't get it. I don't get why anybody even says that. It's like, what the fuck do you mean? Of course I'm looking for someone attractive, like, to me, you know? To me, to me, I... I like, who the fuck's like, nah, dog, I want someone that's butt ugly, like, to me. I, I want someone that's gross. I, I want someone that I can't even look at, okay? It's dumb. Like, even when you say you want, like, an ugly person, that, that's what you desire. Like, that's what you find, at, on some level, attractive. Okay? Not, but I would like to say that you're saying that women... You know, have a higher, you know, have antidepressants, but men, um, I'm a social worker, so men, one out of 10, are more likely to experience depression, but more likely to go undiagnosed and not seek therapy or help. So I do think, and women also, you have to consider the fluctuation in hormones, pregnancy, because that can alter, you know, their mental health. So I think that's kind of a moot point, but I feel like, you know, I'm not looking for a mother figure, I'm looking for an equal. So I feel like with, you Got know, him. If we're saying that women, you know, they're like going home, crying, looking for men. I think it's also that societal pressure that tells you at the same time, you have to have multiple women. They're telling the women, you have to have that one man, that husband by a certain age, have kids by a certain age. There's more pressure on them than there is men. And for, you know, lack of a better term, I think men have gotten off a lot easier because women have so much pressure um and they get judged more harshly than men do for talking about back then when men used to go home bring home the bacon or whatever you know the the domestic violence rate was pretty high during that time and i'll also say that for people of color we never really had the luxury of working one job so my parents you know their parents before them everybody always had to work men and women so there was always that equal opportunity for them to be able to see that they could do it together as opposed to put that one pressure. And I also would like to ask if you guys find submissive women more attractive than dominant women, is that because it makes you feel more validated as a man? Or is there something there that you feel like feeds into your purpose as a man? Yeah, well, it's a balance. If, I, if I'm a dominant person, I need a submissive. If, if I meet a dominant woman, we're going to butt heads. I need a submissive, like, dude. <laughs> Like, you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even talk that way about a pet, dude. Okay? I need a submissive. It's like crazy. What if that changes? Like, what if she grows? Because I would, I would love everybody to be able to grow throughout life. What if she starts becoming more dominant? Does that, is that like a... Are you saying if she starts becoming more dominant in a relationship? More dominant or equal to your dominant? Oh, yeah, she's gone. She's finished. See, We're done. That, see, that's my <laughs> thing. Like, look, I got children. I don't need somebody else to take care of. And I love your thing about, you know, the Prince Charming and everything. But you know what I need? I need a badass woman who can match my badass energy. I work with my wife, and I'm gonna tell you, I take care of her, she takes care of me, and she's badass. And that's what I'm attracted to. I don't need a submissive that I have someone to take care of. And then it's fine, you know, if she goes through that, but then I'll be there and I will take care of her. But I'm not looking for somebody, another child to take care of and have to dominate and tell, you go over there, this is where we're gonna go to dinner, this is we're gonna do that. No. That's why what he was saying, I was going to bring that fact up too. A lot of men are depressed because they put it on this shield of I have to be the leader. I have to do this. And you know who goes to get help first? Women. Okay, that, I, that totally makes sense. I think if we're talking about men not ever dealing with their emotions, it makes sense for this argument that you guys are talking about. But I'm the firm believer I've gotten a lot of therapy in my life. I've done a lot of things for myself personally to resolve my own internal conflict. 
Okay, so it's a job of alpha men. The real integrated alpha man has the capacity to understand what he's feeling, why he's feeling the way that he is, articulate in a way that is productive to the dynamic. So a real man is someone that understands himself deeper at an emotional level, has taken the time to do that so he can show up as a rock, not so he can show up more emotionally. Problem is, is that if you're super emotional, when we talk about the whole thing of being submissive or dominant, your woman is going to dominate you because you're so emotional. Emotionally unstable. Yes. Let's say that. It's emo let's, let's stop using emotion. Let's start using emotionally unstable. Right. Since you're so emotionally unstable, she's going to dominate you, and then she's going to lose respect for you, and that's going to teeter to the waters of the relationship. So, I mean, you guys know dominatrix exists for a reason. A reason. <laughs> Um, and by the way, I used to personal train at Dominatrix. You guys are their clients. <laughs> um, not me, cowboy. <laughs> I'm being serious. Like it's a not me, cowboy. Fuck no, I would never do that. It's like that's the difference between what I said and what he said. Okay, I have been dominated before. It's not for me. I don't really enjoy it. Uh, I feel like it's too forced usually, and like I'm not insecure about it. This guy's like, oh, fucking, if you're being dominated, you're. You're lame, you're wet, you're gay. It's like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? No one, like, people would not even make these assertions about you if you weren't so busy overcompensating for it. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Do you understand? Like, now I immediately am thinking, oh, dude, you definitely secretly love it and are worried about it. Right now, I'm never going to not picture us on again. But okay, I didn't go that far, you fucking weirdos. Holy shit. There's nothing wrong with it if you do, but listen, man, you, you dip your toes in it. Okay. You don't just fucking dive off the deep end. Holy fuck. Some of you chatters are crazy. Yeah. I, I got into that, uh, that plastic fucking thing that I saw on Twitter. What is it? Uh, this dude has like a full body, like plastic cube thing that he stay in, stays inside of. Uh, what the fuck is that? What it, it, you know what it is, right? The vacuum box or whatever. We got to find that. You got pegged? No. I have had my ass eaten, though. Pretty good. She's going to drop that. She 100% is about to drop that fucking frame again. Does no one have that fucking vacuum cube thing? Come on, dude. Yo, it, it, it's fucking insane. Okay, here, 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 here. I can show it because there's like nothing that you can see. Luckily, it's like not TOS. Why did I block this person? I wonder. But yeah, that's what I did. No, I'm kidding. The very hidden thing. I used to I used to date on <laughs> high positions of power, very alpha. But like, here's the thing. I think you guys put a little bit too much pressure on yourselves. It might be a societal thing. I've dated submissive women before. I find them highly annoying. Sometimes I just want somebody to pick a choice. I like her places. She's got better taste than I do when it comes to that kind of stuff. So please go ahead. We do butt heads once in a while because she is dominant. Does that mean she lost respect or attraction for me? We have. No, not at all. And trust me on that one. So I think it does depend on your energy. You have a very high one, right? Maybe it doesn't mix well with somebody who also has a really high dominant energy. I'm not saying that's wrong because they exist for a reason, submissive people, right? But I just think for me, when it's very submissive, I don't find that as sexy. I find that annoying. But see, that, and, no, and, and that makes sense. And the reason why, see, what happens is, the more masculine you are, the more you want the woman to be submissive. The more dominant she is, then the more... I don't know. I think I'm, I think I'm pretty f***ing masculine, dude. No, and I don't want somebody saying, that submissive. I'm saying that, I'm saying that in that moment, you're in your feminine, but go ahead. If you and your wife have, like, a conversation about a disagreement, and then you guys, like, a healthy conversation, and then she ends up being right in the situation, would you consider her dominating me? No, I consider her right. So, I'm what's saying, your definition of like dominant? Like, like you always have to be right. And no, no, it's not about right or wrong. It's about who's running the show. So, by her being right, is that not her? No, that's just her being right in that conversation. Yeah, a good a good leader would allow someone else to be right. A good leader doesn't have to be right. He wants the team to win. 
In fact, I'd call a man insecure if he wouldn't allow a woman to be right on the, on the subject she was clearly right. I like that. I do like that. And, you know, it goes back to the question of, like, what do you find more attractive? Because that's what we're talking about. Yeah, it's a, a preference. It's a preference. It's a preference. It's a preference. It's a preference. Right. One of the things you said is, like, when you and your partner or girlfriend get into something and it's, like, a little heated, like, I get off on that. Me, I totally don't get off on that. Like, I need, I don't need any back talk. I don't need any lip. I don't need any attitude. I need, it's my way or the highway. Like, I don't want none of it. I didn't even have a conversation right. in the first place right, about the disagreement. You're not having no, 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 that no, conversation. No, 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 no. So you're just going to be challenged. You don't have to be challenged. That's okay. Like, no, no back talk. I'm right. That's a different thing. If we're talking, if we're, if we're talking about a topic and she's right about the topic, that's just how no, I was talking about the topic. An opinion of yours or things that no, I'm talking about disagrees with. You're making an opinion. You're saying you want no back. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about opinions. I'm talking about decisions. So, so we can have a conversation about a topic, but when it comes to a decision, the final decision is mine. Let me change my word. If <laughs> <laughs> we were to have a healthy discussion about a decision, which right. she disagrees. She says, I disagree. Right. She says, so if we say, hey, we want to do, she wants to do A, B, and C. And I say, no, I want to do D, E, and F, right? We're, doing that. We're, we're doing D, E, and F at the end of the day. Now, I will listen to what she says. And if I, if I think A, B, and C sounds better, then I say, okay, yeah, let's do A, B, and C. Cause but you that don't sounds want bad talk in the first place. No, no, no. Can that's even no, the conversation. No, that's, that's what I'm saying. If we're having a conversation, that's cool. I'm saying the final decision though is mine. So, so you can speak your mind, but at the end of the day, I'm making the final decision. So it's like, I'm going to let you right. talk. Yeah, I'll let like, you talk, yes. At the, in the end, I don't really care. I don't really care. what I want. No, but, no, I said, no, I, said I care. I, I do, I do want to touch upon the... Is there more thing with, like, like let's, let's clarify submissive. Let's not get that mistaken between incompetent. Like, oh. submissive does not mean incompetent. And I think you might have been talking about women that could be incompetent, where they don't have the capacity to take care of themselves at all or make any type of decision. So I think there's definitely a difference in how she shows up in the relationship compared to being able to make decisions in her everyday life. Sure, but he doesn't want them to make decisions. No, no, I didn't say I didn't want them to make decisions. I'll say this. No, your decision is the final, no matter what. <laughs> some, some of the strongest women in the world right now are sitting in submissive roles because they're strong enough to think for themselves and do what they feel good in their heart. Because there are women that do want to be submissive naturally. And some of those women are the strongest women in the world right now, especially when the world's telling them to go be something that they don't want to be. I do agree that honestly, it is a choice. It's a preference. You know, we shouldn't speak upon like everybody. Obviously, like it's always a gray area. It's a range. It's not. It's not one or it's not one side or, or the other. And if you guys want to be in a relationship where the woman is submissive and the woman also wants to be in a relationship where the male is dominant, that's completely fine. But the, the thing I want to talk about more is the fact that like you guys keep saying that like this is what women want or that like all women want this. Who are we to decide what women want? Because first of all, we're not women. And second, just because of our personal experiences in our lifetime about the people we, that we've interacted with, I feel like that's something we need to take a step back from and clarify that like, no, this is just my personal opinion. In the end, we don't know what women want. Women knows what they want, not men. I, I have yet to see a relationship dynamic, because I would say a relationship dynamic that is optimal has deep connection where you could say there's a deep friendship there, mm -hmm. but also there's sexual polarity. And I've seen dynamics where there is a great friendship there and there is connection and they do live very cohesively. But when the woman is more dominant, the majority of the time, I have yet to see a dynamic where consistently over time, there is strong sexual polarity on her end in a dynamic. And that's fine. Like if that's, if that's what you see Sorry. in your lifetime. Kaya fucking just straight pissed. I didn't even see it. I didn't even notice it. I turned around and there's just so much piss. A misadventure, yes. We noticed, we saw it. Nice. Three million dollar toilet. Stop saying piss maxing. Stop it. It's not funny, okay? Not funny at all. Give her diapers. That's what we're doing with our puppy. That's insane. What? No. Sorry, I can't believe they talked for like 25 minutes about whether submissive women are more attractive than dominating women. And that's completely fine. Like, but, that, but then that biology says that. I don't think it's just my personal opinion. I don't think, but like, probably who you changes. just surround yourself with. Yeah, yeah like, that's, that's just saying. It's like just because you've grown up in a certain area yeah. where like people are like that, because like I could say the same thing, but on the other side, where I've seen plenty of people and plenty of relationships where like that wasn't the case, but then they're like sexually fine you know that they're perfectly fine their polarity is completely fine and they're happy and i could say the same thing i could keep going at you saying that like oh because of what i've seen or what i've ex i've experienced dominant men it won't work 
But then that's dumb because there are cases where dominant women do work, but there's also cases where it doesn't. No, it's all. It's, when all, they're it's just so. It, it's so odd. It's such an odd conversation to have. I don't know why they didn't just like have this conversation with like alpha dogs versus like alpha women, I guess, or something. Because like, there's no women involved here to like defend their humanity almost where it's just a bunch of bros getting together and be like, you know, no, actually submissive women are the shit or like, what is the concept of a submissive woman? Like I just, I still like, I know what they talk about. I know what the alpha dogs uh, mean when they say that shit. Right. But it's like kind of stupid. Not even kind of stupid. It's very stupid. Uh, to, to just like categorize a, a, a woman's traits and behaviors in such a one dimensional way. Happy, they're probably not going out saying, I'm so happy. I'm dominant and I'm a woman. They're not going around saying that, you know, like, they're just happy. They stick to themselves most of the time when they're that happy. I am great at sex. <laughs> Oh, come on, man. Yeah, bro. <laughs> fucking yeah. I, mean, I have a lot to learn. <laughs> I mean, it's odd. Like, who the fuck would be like, nah, man, I'm dog shit at sex. That's like kind of a silly question. You know what I mean? I'm fucking doo-doo, son. I'm, I'm fucking so bad at sex, dude. It's crazy. What's <laughs> That's a weird, disgusting. <laughs> Damn, Do the it. one alpha dog <laughs> said. I'm <laughs> right, right now. <laughs> Bro, this was a chance to redeem yourself. No, no, I know, but it's just. All right. Actually, yeah, I'm going to go back. No, all right. Really good. With my partner, my, my wife, I'm able to not only. I'm going to be honest with you. I think the alpha dogs are probably not very good at sex. Okay. Just like, dude, listen, listen. If you're that much of an alpha dog, if you're looking for like submissive women huh, i.e bitches right then you're 100 percent sports fucking you're not eating pussy you do not care about your uh about the desires of your partner okay i'm making a lot of assertions here maybe they will uh, tell me i'm wrong but i do feel like a lot of this alpha shit comes from being kind of selfish and the reality is that if you're selfish, you're probably going to encounter a lot of people who like lie to you uh, and, and maybe make you feel like you're doing a great job. Yeah, they're jackhammers. Exactly. Fucking like I, I would go so far as to say that communication is more important, like understanding your partner's needs and not being selfish is literally more important than, than what the most common things are about sex. Like, right. Like going long dick size, all this shit. Like, no, what literally matters most is communication, treating your partner with kindness and respect and understanding what they want and allowing them to open up, allowing them to be confident enough to be able to like, trust you enough to tell you what they want, what, uh, what their desires are or even be able to experiment as a matter of fact that takes a lot it's not easy you know if you're if you're the the big dog you know if you're alpha dog you're probably not doing a lot of that because you don't really treat women with a lot of respect <laughs> so i suspect you're just getting in there you got some things that you know uh that that you think you've gotten like positive uh reinforcement out of don't know if it's good or not and you just keep doing that over and over again, thinking like, I'm fucking, I'm the alpha dog. Ah, oh, why don't you have a life-size mirror next to your bed? I want to see myself fuck you. Connect phys physically, but also emotionally, you know? Is, and then I think that's the biggest trick I've learned. Not trick, but the thing I've learned about my years of being with my partner. You have to sort of like, you know, keep the spice going. I, I would say, uh, you know, I think the, the fact that we have a woman who keeps coming back or who keeps wanting it, I think that, you know, that's a sign that she thinks you're great at sex. You know what I mean? Because she, cause she actively wants to keep it going and keep it, keep it, you know, keep it uh, going in that, in that direction. I, w I will say, though, I'm better at sex with women I care about. Yeah, you know, so I it. think, and, and yeah. me being a player and a guy. Yeah, he's like literally, slowly, maybe not even personally understanding what he's saying. But that is the realization that like, yes. What do you mean? Women I care about. 
you're like, yeah, no shit. That's because it's that you have seen this person numerous times, and that person is, for one reason or the other, maybe a, a little bit more comfortable with you, which is wild, but, you know, I'm sure it has happened. Women do have really low standards. Let's be real. There's, this is not exactly a target-rich environment for uh, a lot of a lot of fucking top shelf dudes. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I say this all the time. The bar is very low. Okay, even that guy has somehow cleared it. Guy who goes out and talks to a lot of different women. Um, you know, if if with my girlfriend or like my wife or whatever like that, sex is, sex would be great. With the other girls, it can still be good, but I know that I don't really put in that much effort. Because it's almost like I'm masturbating with someone. And eventually, you know, you know, your, you, know your, you know your partner's like comfortability, what they like, what they don't like, and things, and that's how you make sex a lot better instead of like sleeping with. Right. A thousand percent. Plus, you love them. Right. Like, so you knew if you were gonna die today and you could have sex with one person before you die, it would be that person. Right. Like, no matter what, like you could have every supermodel, every movie star, everything. Like, fuck all that. Like, I want that person. Focus so much on like what they like as well. You know, like you're kind of there to like pleasure them. You know, because you care about them so much. Right. Which is why, like, you would hyperfixate on, like, what do they like, what they don't like. And you can easily, like, adjust yourself and put in effort for that person. And, and, like, for instance, it's so true that you said that. Because my wife and I, we have this thing we call the love menu. Okay, you know, why did we invent the love menu? We invented... Oh, my God. This dude is... He's like every fucking, like, granola, crunchy granola stereotype, dude. I mean, I like him. I mean, he's, he's, he seems like a fun dude, but also at the same time, it's like, he's such a hippie dad, dude. It's fucking crazy. Like everything that he's brought up so far has been ridiculous. <laughs> like we got to love menu. We the love menu because we have three children and they're only two years apart. They're in the mid twenties now, but you know, think about it. Two, four, six at home and I'm working and she's doing her thing. So we found that in our young relationship, sometimes the other person might be tired and like turn, but that's hurt feelings. That makes you kind of do this type of thing. So what we did is we come up with a love menu of like, here's the appetizers. I might not be ready for the full course tonight, but here's your appetizer because I know you like this or here is your dessert or here's your main course meal. And we broke it into those things. So when we do come to each other and we need that connection, it's not just like, I'm tired. I don't feel like it. It's kind of like, well, what's going to happen? We have a full course meal tonight or we're just going to have some appetizers. And that kept it, that's kept it spicy for us. And also like what you say, making sure we're pleasuring each other. It's not just... <laughs> this guy gives Dale's wife the love menu every night. John Redcorn. Dude, stop. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, no. Dale Gribble. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. I need to get my rocks off. But, like, you know, how are you feeling about that? And how are you feeling about that? Because... When you're in a long-term committed relationship, you have to do that or it dies. God damn right. it, Bobby. I, I love that. I love you talk about the amount of intention that you live with in regard to making sure that you're always evolving with it, always making sure that... By the way, the, I mean, this was... It was either going to be like the betas were going to be unbearably fucking cringe or they were going to be like significantly more confident than the alpha dogs. And it's been a mixture of both, really. But like, you know, it, it's it's just like... Sometimes they come across as unbearably cringe, and in most times they come across as like very, very confident, like much more confident than their alpha dog peers. That's spicy. You just care. I think if you have a genuine care for the other person that you're involved with, then maybe you're not great right then and there, but it will eventually develop into being something that way. So I love that care that you demonstrate with that. I'm interested in what you had to say. You've been very quiet on this one. You're usually like. <laughs> All he said was, look at the receipts, you know, he, 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 he knows, he knows it. <laughs> and, and, and look, and that's a very important thing, right? Is so I think that as a man, I hate to say, actually, I don't hate to say. Uh, yeah, I don't think this guy's ever, this guy has never hated to say anything. Okay. Seems to me like he's not the type of guy who ever hates to say anything. He just says everything. And I do find, by and largely, it's kind of like you could have the alpha beta argument. I do that thinking coming in kind of a, in, a, in a dominant way. There's a reason Fifty Shades of Grey is so popular. There's a reason it's the most read book of all time. There's a reason there's detail in it. And I think you can say so much to a woman in sex without saying a word. You know what I'm saying? It's about how you touch her, how you have your hands on her, 
the way you take over her in that way. And that's okay. Just knowing and, and seeing that expression and seeing things that happen and as a result of that is enough for me to know where I stand. On okay. This man's understanding of like sexuality and women's sexual desires is just so bad. Like it's like a, it's like a, like a 55 year old repressed man. Okay. Ah, food shades of gray. It's like, yeah. In another world, if he wasn't doing like the MLM shit and he actually struck gold, he would be doing the M HUD uh, classic videos that he finds on TikTok of like dudes in the Midwest who like love wearing a three piece suit without the actual blazer and the oh yeah like over the fucking Fifty Shades of Grey movie dialogue doing like weird BDSM moves that they think are like super sick. To get all the barber pussy in a fucking 30 mile radius. You know what I'm saying? Like, anyone anyone that fucking says like, yeah, I fit Shazy Gray, brother. <laughs> Women love that shit. <laughs> this is the type of guy who says shit that sounds more like a threat than sexy. Like, I would eat you out for hours. You dog, get a sip of water. <laughs> on the subject. The only thing I disagree yeah, with this. you about is I agree with that energy. That take control energy. And I think when women does love that. But sometimes my wife likes to take control, and I love it. Well, get up there, girl. <laughs> get up there, girl, and do what you gotta do. You know, so, like, I, hey, I don't hey, I'll put my hands behind my head too. Yeah, cowboy. Kind of like, hey, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah but what? I, but I, but I, by and largely. Yeah. Yes, and then when she wants to, but even when you're all bottom, man, you're still doing work, bro. It's all about dancing, bro. I don't want to get naked, but I have sex tattooed on my chest. <laughs> Can I? <laughs> well, it wouldn't take much. Huh? No, it's, yeah. it's, it's right here on my rib. Okay. All right. And it's like a, it's like a old one, too. Not even like a... I think the biggest thing I've ever heard from my sexual partners is like, wow, you really caught me off guard. And I think that's like a big part of it. What does that mean? No. They're like, damn, you're worse than I thought it was going to be. Like, what the fuck's he saying? Oh, my God, dude. Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. I don't. I, I don't want to even think so about it. Is this it. like an argument with myself? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us why you're terrible at sex. <laughs> you missed it. He stripped. <laughs> no, I did see that. I saw it. I disagree because I just feel like it's such a typical conversation and belief that every guy believes are great at sex. And to be real, when I talk to my girlfriends, none of them have good sex with guys unless it's like you guys said, your partner. Then you can. This guy is the most normal alpha guy, by the way, which is like a little bit uncharacter uncharacteristic of like the average alpha dog. You know what I mean? Like he's not wrong. Also, like you can be. You can have great sexual chemistry with one person and and nothing with another person. You know what I mean? Like, there is no, like, I'm consistently the best at sex uh, across the board. You know what I mean? Yeah, there are best practices, certainly. You know what I mean? There are best practices. But uh, ultimately, like, it's not going to always work. Have you ever had bad sex? Of course I have. But... Sex is a lot like, for guys, sex is a lot like pizza for the most part. I know there's a fucking cliche to say, but even bad sex is still, you know, fine. It's still good. Uh, the, 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 it doesn't take much is what I'm saying, okay? It doesn't take much, for me at least. Maybe not for everybody. So, but yeah, I have certainly had... Uh, I, I've certainly had, you know, not great experiences. You can get better at it, right? And you know what they like. So that's what I mean. Like, I think I'm great with my girlfriend. But if I was to generate and say, like, I'm great at sex, I'd be like, oh, I didn't, you know, almost every girl I slept with before probably never even got off, really. But to say, like, I'm great at sex. You know, I can bring a dildo in. You know, like, <laughs> it's just like, I mean, I'm nothing against that. Like, I, I, I like all kinds I of things. I didn't mention a dildo. <laughs> Why'd you look at me like that? <laughs> I was wondering why you said that. No, I'm just saying that. Like, <laughs> but you still look at him. You look like, like, you look like a tech. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm not But it's like, I, I just feel like, you know, there's a lot for me to learn even now. 
with my partner and I just like to say I'm great. I also, I don't say that to myself because I think that blocks me from something that I might not be good at actually. No, I agree. I, I, don't, I completely agree with the aspect that like, honestly, there's always room for growth, you know, like going around saying, thinking that you're like the best is like some, is not something that I agree with, but more so that like, especially with someone that, you know, like a partner, like that you actually want to give, like give the effort into you learn, you know, like yeah. it doesn't always have to go like perfect the first time, you know, you pick up things like everyone's different, you know, man and woman. So like, honestly, like it's, but that's why I, I, when I think when that question says I'm great at sex, like you, it, that, that to me tells me you could line up 10 girls and nine out of 10, you would know exactly what to do. Sometimes with it's that. just like a confidence. Yeah. Like I am confident that I can achieve good sex. Exactly. Shut up, bro. You're beta. No, you can't do that. You can't have it both ways, dog. You said you're beta. Right. Cause, it, cause that's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Cause, cause, cause it seems alpha to me. Okay. What is this? My man pulled out the sex tattoo. I can never take him seriously after that, okay? The thing is, I, I look at it like, because you were saying, well, being the best, you know, you can't really see me being the best, but I disagree. I, think, I, look at, I look at it as I am the best, but I'm choosing to be, to be great with this person. And so what I'm saying is I can be really great with this one other girl, but I choose not to. And I do that purposely. And the reason why I do it purposely is because, like I was saying earlier, when we talk about friends with girls and all that other stuff is that, Women have to earn good dick. That's how I look at it. You understand what I'm saying? So if I'm, if I'm with a woman where I just met you at the bar and we're just hooking up, I'll give you, I'll give you some, like, I, said, I should say women should earn great but I'll give her some good dick. But it ain't going to be great because you haven't earned it. You're not my girl. You haven't done anything. You're not going to go the extra mile for her. Right? Exactly. I'm not going to go the extra mile for a new girl. Like, I just... agreed with the... <laughs> <laughs> I agree with the mentality, but they're not the... The stage of the stage. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm just not going to do all that for a new girl. I'm not, not going to do that. So I can't, so I, what I'm saying is, is that the greatness comes from within you to know that you can, but you have to make the decision to do that. And I think once, and most guys, if they care about a woman, they, they'll do that because that woman in some form of fashion has earned that type of energy from him. And that, that's how I look at it. It's like, I completely agree, but I just want to change the word earn to something else. <laughs> something similar, but that means a little different. Because, like, you don't want to give as much effort to, like, other people that you don't really you, you see, like, long-term with. But then, like, obviously, if it's, like, a partner or someone that you can see a future with, you know that you can keep, you know, improving. You can be, like, the best, you know, for that person. Who thinks that great sex is, is more mental or more physical? Who, which one would you raise your hand? Well... Which one? Say, say, okay. say one of them. Who thinks that great sex is more mental? I mean, it's more. I think it's more mental. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who thinks great sex is more physical? The reason why I sat down and then I stepped back is because stepping down, uh, it was. I mean, sitting down, it was just kind of like that societal pressure of, you know, we all agree like men have to be uh, really great at Good sex, at <laughs> and I had to check myself out of my ego and take a step back because it can't be nine out of ten. It has to be ten out of ten. I know I've had, you know, one night stands and I can't account for every single partner that I've had, if they had a great experience or not. I could just be honest with myself and say, I did my best, but you know, for whoever is going to be my partner next, you have to have that, like that sense of like open-mindedness in a way, because what they might think they want from you to make you great, you might not agree with even trying. You know, I get what you're saying about women having to earn uh, great but I feel like at the same time, why is it so, so funny coming out of your mouth? I feel like, um, I, I told you I'm a comedian. I feel like at the same time, um, you know, women's needs are a lot different than men's in bed. So what might be, you know, easy for you, like a quick one, two, they're expecting, you know, maybe more foreplay or more physical intimacy or, you know, and with the whole like BDSM with like Fifty Shades of Grey, I think that appeal to like a certain subset of women and their fantasies but i don't think that accounts for all women i think it's a great fantasy but i think if you put most women like really say do you want that they'd be like i want that nah they really want it women should not be in position of power <laughs> game over <laughs> just like his hand <laughs> says i'm the only one i think a woman can Brave, dude. Thank you. Real alpha dog behavior, dude. Thanks, man. Thank you Being for that. Being in a position of power only by herself, Brave. but not in relation to 
being in a relationship with a man. Because when, when she's in a relationship with a man, the man has to be the leader. The man has to be the one that's guiding the situation, directing the situation. If it's in any other situation by herself with work, you know, with her friends or whatever, she can do whatever she wants to do. <laughs> game over. <laughs> Your game is over. <laughs> <laughs> I first want to ask because there was a lot of like like has to have to's but like not really a reason behind it like can I ask like what's your reason behind like why a man has to be in the power like in power why can't a woman be in power power is such a weird word I'll say more like the leadership role and I and the thing is is that a man has to lead a woman he has to guide a woman because what happens is that when, when it's the opposite when a woman is leading that man she usually loses respect for him when she's in a relationship with a man who is, you know, under her, who's submissive to her in a lot of different situations, then she starts to lose respect for him because she's looking for a man to lead and guide her. If you notice, they have sex with the bad boys, but then the nice guys get tossed to the side. You see, like, why is that? You yeah. see I mean? Well, if you look at them psychologically, they have past traumas and issues probably. But like, look, there's, there's women for you. Right. I mean, like uh, you're on a different scale. What I would say, some women want a guy like you because they don't want to do anything. Right. They don't want to take that position. Um, I'm around a lot of women who don't want that. They're they're in positions of power, not just in work, career, at home. Uh, I know a lot of them. I do business. I find women much more pleasant to do business with. But when you're talking about maybe being at home, I don't know. It's just like I think when you get into your part your end of the pond it can get a little bit mucky you know what i mean and I, I i don't really subscribe to that as well i heard you say you were from new york i lived in manhattan for 30 years as a fashion designer in the heart of manhattan she was working as a fashion editor i held it down with the three kids i was the one bringing the money home i was the one doing that after the, after my son my youngest went back to school she went back to work i always wanted to have my own collection she was like you should do that now so guess what? She had the job. She paid the bills while I was building my company. So I could be strong in our relationship and be a man in our relationship, but I also got to know what it means to have a partner next to me and not someone that I have to lead. Well, I, th I think it's really, really important to specify what leading means. Right. And so right now we're talking about, you talked about, okay, we do the chores sometimes. She pays more, sometimes I pay more. I, I think it's looking at a really superficial level. I think what you look at in a relationship when you look at leadership and the one that is following per se mm -hmm. is, who's the one holding down the emotional space? Like who has the capacity to show up as the rock the majority of the time in the dynamic. And if that is the woman, I believe for the most part, the polarity gets thrown off and there will be a deficiency in the sexual attraction that she'll have for you. If you are more excessively emotional and unstable than your. I'm not going to lie. I have a take here after listening to fucking 41 minutes of this shit, I've realized that the whatever style podcasts have actually figured out the the uh, formula down to a fucking T. This is kind of boring, in my opinion, because they're like being earnest. They're being honest. A lot of their takes are stupid, but like they're not necessarily fun when they're just like talking to whoever they perceive as betas, right? Like it's not... It's not very entertaining. They're just kind of boring. They're just kind of dudes who don't know what the fuck they're talking about, have like unhinged takes, but aren't actually going as aggro as they normally would be when they're in front of women that they consider to be like shitty and lesser than them that are talking back to them. And that should never happen because you're an alpha dog, like, you know, a, a beta woman. You know who's the ultimate beta? A woman, right? That's the ultimate beta worse than a man right so it just feels like very tempered and they're more so focused on coming across like fucking normal and still failing to do so in many respects but it's just not very entertaining it's as a matter of fact it's so boring that uh, i forgot to run the top of the hour ad break At the top of the hour. I think the other reason why. Is because they have no sigmas. No omegas. No sigmas. 
But don't worry. If you want to be a Sigma male at the top of the hour and avoid those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 over free with a Twitch Prime. Or connect your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Okay? Use it on your favorite broadcaster. You can also get gifted a sub if you are lucky. Here's the three-minute break now. Your wife, I do believe that's going to lead to issues in the relationship. A man's job is to be the mountain that a woman's emotional waves crash into. Like, straight up. So, m women are always going to be more emotional than men. Men should be the stable ones. Men don't need to be crying in front of women. And ideally, they're not splitting chores. And I don't mean that disrespectfully, but I, don't, I think that if a woman cannot look up to you in some way, then she cannot respect you. And if she cannot respect you, she cannot love you. I totally just yeah. Totally just. Yeah. So, and the only reason I didn't come sit down is because I have some really, really good women in, in leadership roles in my in my businesses, and they are absolute leaders. Now, they might lead under me, but I think they stand alone as leaders, and I respect them enough that I would never come sit down o over that particular statement because it's too vague. But in the relationship, yes, sir, I do agree that a man should be the leader. He should be the breadwinner, and he should be the one solving all the problems out in the world and emotionally at home. I, 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 I just, I mean, I'm glad again that you, that you two say for work it's fine, but when it comes to our relationship, I got to be the one to wear the pants. And I, not, okay, let's not say pants. We'll use the person's words. I got to be <laughs> the mountain that her emotions crash into. I hate to tell you guys, we can be very emotional too. And I know there's a lot of guys in my 55 years that are way emotional to some of these women out here now that are taking charge. So I think that's no. I agree, no I agree with you. I agree with you. They, 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 are, yeah. they are, but they <laughs> and notice, you notice, and I don't think it hurts the relationship. Either. And if you noticed, isn't it weird that nowadays they're talking about all these single, sexless men and all these guys having issues? Why do you think that is? They're becoming more emotional than ever. Exactly. I think no. <laughs> I think women are putting up with less bullcrap. No, they, yes, no, no, no. They, no they're not putting up. I am less. not a sexless single guy. <laughs> No, I'm not saying you. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying this. But no one said you were. <laughs> my girlfriend is an emotional rock for me. That's what I mean. I'm sorry, but I got to strongly disagree with everything you say. I'm also a breadwinner right now. She, it wasn't always like that, though. Uh, she's going through a time, and she wants to actually do something for herself, and I totally support that. But when it comes to an emotional, whatever you just said, that analogy, look, I mean, I think that's the problem also with a lot of uh toxicity that goes on because some men a lot of men have emotions you don't know how to express it and then it turns into this opposite toxicity how do i know this i used to be one of them me too they, like, it feels like a lot of these like rich millionaires are the ones that like have huge high divorce rates and things of that sort and i think it's because they're just genuinely unhappy like is your woman with you for your security or do they actually like you as a person mm -hmm. And we're starting to see that, like, yeah, like, yeah, women want me at first, but it, I don't think it ends well because after a while, like, they want you for your security. They don't want you for who you are as a person and things of that sort. And that's why we see these millionaires and all these, like, really alpha males getting high divorce rates because I think at first it starts off with, like, alpha. security. Money doesn't make you alpha. Yeah, I think so. No, not at all, man. Not at all. Nope. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah, you know. See this guy's, like, a little bit more normal than Andrew Tate, which doesn't take much. Like, he's not as, like, I mean, he's still deeply insecure, you could tell, but he's not as insecure as Andrew Tate, but he's still deeply insecure. The guy in the blue suit is a Facebook quote generator? Yeah, 100%. I mean, there's a, that's a, there's a big fucking, there's a big market for that. There's a lot of dumb dudes out there, man. Um, and uh, out of the alphas, him is actually, he is actually the most normal uh, and makes the rest of the alpha dog group look, not as like ridiculous in comparison because like uh, at first my my automatic assumption is like oh if you call yourself alpha you're ridiculous i mean he's actually like a normal dude um but i would like to have the blue suit guy on if i were to debate any of these dudes or talk to them you educate me that's why i came here <laughs> a man can just be friends with an attractive woman can cat cat no technicalities, bro. <laughs> so I think it's all about, again, as we've been saying before, it's all about choices. Um, I think if you find a woman attractive, it depends on, you know, are you going to choose to pursue her or not? Um, but for some of us, you know, like if we're speaking from personal experience, I've met many attractive women um, and 
that's not the only thing that, you know, I'm looking for. It's also about personality. So you, she can be a 10, but if it's like the, the personality is just, you know, someone who doesn't challenge me on a spiritual level, emotional level, um, someone who also is like emotionally unavailable, like then it doesn't really matter. I, I have friends who are like, you know, I was considered very attractive, but then at the same time I could, and when I think about it, I, I wouldn't be able to stand like being alone. And this is my favorite question. A man can just be friends with an attractive woman. Not, nope, not capable, dude. I, I got that dog in me. I got that fucking dog in me, dude. Rawr, 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 rawr. Bark, bark, bark. You know what I'm saying? No shot, brother. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Room with them for like more than like 10 minutes. You know what I mean? I can acknowledge if like certain female friends of mine are attractive, but doesn't mean I'm like sexually attracted to them. And it comes to a point where like I see them as like sisters or just such close friends that even like the thought of them naked like grosses me out. Because like I just don't see them that way. I see them as like very close, <laughs> like almost like family in some cases and things of that sort. And you know, sometimes like you grow up with certain women and you like you see them as like a sister or you see them as a close friend and you just grow up and you don't see her like that. Fundamentally, what's what's natural and what is possible, I think are two different things. Is it natural to not be attracted to a very attractive woman to you? I don't think so. But with a lot of intention with it and your priorities are elsewhere and you're very intentional with how you're showing up in that space, I think you can do it. I think that was a question if it can be done not if it's natural or not. If I'm attracted to you, honestly, I'm trying to, I'm trying to smash. You understand what I'm trying to, we, we gotta have sex and we have to have, be in What you see is what you get with this guy. What, is she poo poo? Yeah. I don't know where, wait, oh, here. She poop? She pooped. We're very excited. Eat as well. You know, a little bit, you know, five minutes in the crate and all of a sudden this is a different dog. You know what I'm saying? This is the dog I got in me. I got that dog in me and the dog is Kaya. some type of sexual situation or I don't really want to, you know, interact with you. On top of that, I don't believe in giving women non-sexual attention unless we're in a relationship. And the reason why is because I feel like uh, non-sexual attention from a man towards a woman is very valuable. So I'm not just what? giving you that just to be friends. Bro, what are you saying, dude? Thank God Mr. Lucario's on here because he's bringing the content every time he opens his mouth. I don't believe in giving non-sexual attention to women unless we're in a relationship. Like, I go to Starbucks, and if the barista's a woman, dude, I'm fucking her, okay? If she asks me, if, <laughs> if she's like, hey, sir, what kind of coffee do you want? I'm taking my dick out, okay? I have been, I am, <laughs> I'm on many lists. I cannot be within 500 yards of a school, Okay. You don't understand because that's very important to me. Non-sexual attention, okay? Non-sexual attention is only for relationships. <laughs> Every other woman, I'm sexually harassing. <laughs> you know, so I'm saying like, I'm not just going to do that for you. And so what it is is that if I'm going to do that for you, you have to be under my program, which means that we're in some sort of sexual relationship between me and you you see what i'm saying so that, that's how i look at that i think that men and women can be friends it's just not because the man wants to mm -hmm. most often it's the man is trying to sleep with the woman right and he's trying to hang around long enough for her to slip up and make that happen. Mm -hmm. i mean exactly. let's keep it 100 exactly right so can they yes and that would have been the technicality like when i saw you moving i'm like mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but but overall mm -hmm. most of the time you're not going to see a man be friends with a very overweight woman you're not going to see a man be friends with with a very unattractive woman unless there's some kind of financial reward there. So by and largely, I don't buy guy friends, mm -hmm. particularly with any girl I'm seeing. It's like, yeah, right. I think when, it, when I think about it, like, and I had a technicality on the other side because I, you know, I'm like, yeah, part of me really believes that can happen. 
But then I go back to my experience in life and my friends, and it's really hard. I, I, I was running over there in my head, like, should I sit down? But I was running all these scenarios from life experience of my friends who have said that, girls and guys, because it's not just guys. And it's never worked out that way. It just never is. And I think because, and it's if you find the person can be, yes, a person can be an attractive person, and you not find that person attractive and you be friends. You have friendship and think, attraction. That's yeah. my thing. Yeah. Part of a relationship that. is is friendship and getting right. along. And then on top of it, you find that person attractive. No way. I just think it's a very rare, very rare thing. Right. You know, it, yes, a person can be attracted to me and you not find them attractive and I can be friends with that person. But if I'm finding that, or if you're finding that person attractive and you build a friendship and you connect, and yeah. you connect then you want to, you probably want to be with them. That's, like, I, want to be, I don't think Adam and Mike say it doesn't exist. But to me, just again, in my experience in life and just knowing my friends and people, I don't know one that has worked out that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with like, your own experiences obviously if that's what you've seen or that's what you personally experienced that like you yourself couldn't be in a friendship with a woman like again that's your personal ex experience though whereas the question is like can a man any man be in a, like a regular friendship with a woman like a real real friendship yeah. like they're actually really friends yeah and he I, not want to sleep with yeah. her and find her attractive right. no I don't, I don't, yeah i think it's i think it's bs because like at that point like you're also we're talking about like now we're talking about like what is an attractive woman right and are we talking about just looks because in this case, like, there are people who, like, honestly don't, don't like, have sexual, like, desires for a woman who isn't, like, emotionally, like... I think it's, is she attractive to you? Yeah. I think that's, like, the basis of it. When you look at specific situations, so for some of these females that work for you, for example, mm -hmm. if they're very attractive, do you feel, I would imagine you have the, the capacity to compartmentalize that? Gift from God. Yeah, man. I just, it, the second I sign their check... It's gone. It's gone, right? So it's just, I think it's the same thing with friends as significant others as well. It's like I have the ability to compartmentalize it where it's like, all right, this attraction is just dissipates. So is that the barrier that can make a man attract a man attract a man friends with an attractive woman? If there's that barrier of him being in a relationship or are you working for them? Well, first of all, we're not friends. You work for me. Right. You know, I care about you fully. You're part of the family, but you work for me. We're not personal friends. And me and you will not be in an atmosphere. We're alone. Right. So when you go back to it, is it a thing where if you're both single, do we all think that you could be a friends with an attractive woman? If we're both single. Hell no. Nope. I don't yeah. know. Well, 